Hello good people of YouTube, Mount Bound here, and today I'm bringing you a list of premium ships that I regret buying. Now, let me be, let me be clear up front, um, the way this list is organized, the first two ships, I, they're the ships that I regret, regret buying the least because they're not bad ships, I just, they don't fit my playstyle, or there's just one or two things about them that I myself don't particularly like, that doesn't mean that they're bad ships. Now the last two ships on this list, I do believe are bad ships. Now, again, this is all my opinion, this is my personal opinion, so just remember that when we're, as we get into our first ship right now. Boy, the comments are about to explode. The first ship is the Hood, Tier 7 British Battleship. Um, now, this is the premium that I regret buying the least, which means that it's not really a bad ship, it's really not. It's just, mmm, British... AP. Okay, so the hood has eight 15 inch guns at tier 7. That's not bad, it's pretty good firepower at tier 7. But with British AP, you it's really good against cruisers and destroyers, but against other battleships, it's not that great because it has a shorter fuse time. Now, while not impossible to get citadels on enemy battleships, it is really hard to get citadels on enemy battleships with the hood. It's, it's not impossible, it's entirely doable, I've done it a couple of times, but just not the same amount as you would with a, another battleship. And of course, I know, the ship is designed to mainly um, be effective against cruisers, well, at least war gaming's eyes. And it is really good that it is really good against cruisers if you can get them pretty close and um, hit their, you know, anywhere middle where their citadel should be, you will get a citadel on it. You can reliably get citadels on cruisers with the hood. It's also fast and very maneuverable. It's also lightly armored and y'all know that I like brawling with, with my battleships and the hood isn't really that good for that. Um, and also I just don't play it that much anymore. That's why it's you know on this list in the first place. I don't really play it as much as I do my other premiums since you know it is mainly a uh, kind of an anti-cruiser role and is so lightly armored it isn't really that great for brawling but again it's not a bad ship it's, it just doesn't fit my playstyle so that is the main reason why it's on this list it's not a bad ship it doesn't fit my playstyle and i don't particularly like it all that much anyway moving on to the, the second ship it's the um harikaze the ship from the anime high school fleet hold your pitchforks real quick here's a story for you that guy right there, King Big Wolf 69. He is the clan leader for the clan Lockdown. I used to be part of that clan. Keyword is used to. I got kicked from that clan because he started a rule to where if you were on World of Warships, you had to be in Discord. Like, you didn't have to be on Discord, you had to be in the Discord chat. And for me, that's, you know, I told him, hey, I can't do that, and that's him right there in the Shimakaze too, so I told him I can't do that, I'm a YouTuber, you know, I need to be able to record without any notifications popping up or any interruptions, and I didn't really get a response back, and then one thing led to another, well, it wasn't really one thing, I just, he sent me the same message uh, again saying that yeah, I had to be in the Discord chat for any part of the clan, and I already told him that you know, I'm a YouTuber, I can't do that, you know, I can't have notifications, I can't have people talking in the background of my videos. So I just got kicked from the clan, and yeah. But yeah, that's the same with Shimakaze, it just took me about half his health in uh, Harakaze. Uh, <laughs> uh, long story short, I, I don't actually manage up killing him, I, I managed to get myself killed by another means before then. But anyway, Harakaze, the reason it is on this list is quite simple. I don't play destroyers a lot. So why'd you buy this, this destroyer then? Well, you see, it was part of a package that included the, the Alabama, the um, Prince Oregon, and the Harakaze. $108 for three tier 8 premium ships. Not a bad deal. Um, so I bought it, and I, out of all that, out of, out of those three ships, I really only play Alabama a lot. I play the Prince Oregon every now and then, and I never play the Harakaze. That This game you're seeing right here is the first time I played the Harakaze. So I have a bit, re a bit of regret for that because I really should have just went and bought the Alabama rather than going on and getting the Harakaze 
and the Prince Oregon. Uh, but I have played the Prince Oregon some, and I I am enjoying it for the most part. It's what the Prince Oregon is what made me want to grind out the German cruiser line. So you know, I, I you know I do play the Prince Oregon. That's why it's not on this list. I ju I've just never played the Harakaze. Just it just chills in port. So I really should have just bought the Alabama. I could have got the Alabama loaded with the 10 point commander and all the extra doodots that comes with it still come ahead um, about $20 because it was $80 at the time that I bought um, that package but yeah so again this is a good example how these first two are really on me I really should have made smarter decisions you know really should have just bought the Alabama wrap rather than getting that whole package with the three ships but again, the Harakazi, from what I've seen about it, from what I've heard about it, it's, it's no, in no way a bad ship. It's just I really should have just bought the Alabama <laughs> rather than the package deal. Anyway, moving on to the third list, the third ship in this list, and keep in mind, this is the point to where these next two ships, I believe, are bad ships. And it should come as no surprise that the Roma is on this list. Now, the Roma is I have a special relationship with the Roma. It's a tier 8 Italian battleship. I my first video that got over a hundred views and actually blew up was my Roma first impressions video. It's I believe it's over a thousand views now, but back in the day I had under fifty subscribers and I was actually playing PUBG because back in the day I used to do PUBG and World Warships videos regularly. And I was playing PUBG, and for some reason the PUBG, like, the whole screen just got minimized, and then the, the World of Warships update came up. And I'm like, what? It's like Thursday, why am I getting an update for World of Warships? So I just told it to go ahead, and it was a really fast update, it was just a micro update. So I was playing, so I went back to playing PUBG, and I'm like, what the, what's going on? Why, why is the World of Warships updating on, on today? It, it shouldn't be. So I finished the round of PUBG, I uh, recorded it, and then I was going to go back and edit it at, uh, in a little while. So I went and put up World of Warships, and I got a notification that a ship called Roma got added uh, into the premium store. I'm like, Roma? What's that? So I went and looked in the premium store, and it was a tier 8 Italian battleship. I'm like, Italian battleship? You know, all I know of the uh, Julio Cesare, uh, ooh, wow, I just sound like a broken record right there, Julio Cesare which is a tier 5 Italian battleship. I'm like, where'd this thing come from? I, I hadn't really heard anything about it before then, so I went ahead and I went ahead and picked it up. Um, I just got the base version of this ship. I think it was like 60 bucks, something like that. $65, yeah. It was, uh, yes, yeah, $65. It was a Roma and like a 10-point captain. So it wasn't the base version, whatever version that was. It was on, they had a discount. I was like, oh, okay. I didn't get the Pope hat skin for it because I thought that looked stupid. Loaded it up, recorded my first impressions video, and the rest is history. So, I do owe this ship a little bit, well, quite a lot of it, because it was my first big video, per se, for a channel of my size. I mean, a channel with under 50 subscribers, uh, it went, it blew up to like 800 views in like four days. It's, to this day, one of my fastest viewed videos ever. It was because I just managed to get it, the video out, like just, I think I got it out like within an hour of the ship being released. So, um, so I played it, and I'm like, okay, it's it's kind of cool, you know, the turrets are really fast, the uh, the velocity on the guns is insane, and you know, all that good stuff. So I released my first impressions video, and then after I played it for a bit, I had to, I realized that it had just terrible, terrible dispersion, and it still does, and I've. <laughs> I've even thrown some mo a module on there to help with that, and see, th this Bismarck is actually completely still, his engines are broken right now, and I'm still missing a good amount of the shots that I'm, that I'm uh, shooting at him. And so this is, again, the Rome is actually how I got my first impressions, second impressions, and final impressions video um, format, because at first I said, you know, shift not too bad, um, I just gotta get used to the guns, yada yada yada, and then after I played it some more, oh, was I so wrong about the guns. The guns are wildly inaccurate. Um, their range is only 18 kilometers, which, you know, at tier 8, you know, there's a bunch of tier 8 battleships with, you know, an 18 ish kilometer range, but their guns are far more accurate. You know, uh, Massachusetts. 
it has an 18.3 kilometer uh, range, but the guns are far more accurate than the Roma's. Plus, it's also pretty tanky and has good secondaries. The Roma is neither. The Roma actually has a pretty high citadel, and its secondaries aren't really that useful at all. Um, it's gun its turrets do traverse fast, but I mean, I don't see why that would. That's because they they can re they can traverse faster than the ship can than the uh, guns actually reload. It's like a 25 second um, 180 time, but the guns still take 30 seconds to to, uh, to reload. And even if you, uh, I don't think it can fit the main battery reload module. But even if you did, you know, so you can rotate to one side, fire, rotate to the other side, fire. Which okay, that's pretty cool. But the simple fact of the matter is, it is a tier eight, and tier eights will get up to your tier t to tier ten most of the time. Wow, that was just a little tongue twister right there. So. A tier 8 with a high citadel, horrible dispersion, and an 18 kilometer range, getting up to, to tier 10, is not fun. Now granted, at tier 8 battles, the ship will do fine, I have to give that to it, it will do fine at tier 8 battles, but the second it gets up to, to tier 9 and then to tier 10, it, it's just painful to play. Now. I have had several people comment on what they think should be done to the ship, and I can't remember who commented, it, who left the comment, but one of y'all said, it was a subscriber, one of y'all said that they either just need to lower the citadel a bit, or just increase the sigma. If they do one of those two things, the ship will be perfectly fine. Because the hull in itself is pretty good, it's nice and maneuverable, it's got a nice top speed, I think the ship that looks beautiful, it's a beautifully designed ship. You have to give the, that the uh, you have to give that to the Italians. It's a beautifully designed ship. I love the uh, premium camo on it, not the Pope hat camo. And it it's really maneuverable. It's really fast. I think if they just either lower the citadel or just increase the sigma a bit on the main battery guns, it'll be f uh, it'll be a fantastic ship and well worth the money. And oh, the other thing about it is <laughs> this is one of the main points about it. The dispersion is terrible, and the velocity on the, on the uh, shells is so high that even if you manage to hit something like a cruiser you're more than likely going to overpin them. I have overpinned just so many cruisers, citadels with this thing at range 2. If you go watch my Roma second impressions video, that was the whole point of that video. I You would either just completely miss cruisers or just overpin the crap out of them. The only thing I could constantly citadel was Pensacola's. Because even though apparently it's still the reason it's overpinning cruisers is because the, the velocity is too high and just goes through the armor because the armor is so thin. But on a Pensacola, which is famous, well, infamous for its paper thin armor, I can still citadel that thing. And that just didn't make sense to me. Broadside, too. You would completely just brought, just overpin broadside cruiser citadels at, at range, too. It was completely annoying and, you know. It, oh, God. This is one of the first ships I truly hated in the game. Well, well the first premium I truly hated. But anyway, it, I'm, I'm done just crapping all over the Roma. I mean, at tier 8 by itself, it'll do fine. I know it's, a lot of you have said in ranked, it's a beast. And I can believe that, because at tier 8, eight, you know, it can pretty much decimate any tier 8 battleship if you can get in close enough. And it, and it can get in close, because it has a 13-kilometer detection range right now. Mine does, and I don't even have the concealment skill on it. So, you know, I can see if you fit the concealment skill on the captain, you know, that's... That's a really small detection range. But again, at tier 8, my, at tier eight it's no problem. When you get up to the tier 9, tier 10, which if you just play random battles like me, I haven't really played ranked or clan battles or anything. At, if you just play random like me and get up to the tier 10 a lot in tier 8 battleships, it's extremely frustrating. So, and I've had this conversation with a lot of you in the comments, so you know where I stand on the drama. But anyway, that is my third ship on the list. And moving on to the final ship on the list. Hello there, it's the Musashi. Now, the Musashi cost me um, about a hundred and um, fifty dollars. That's about how much free XP I had to convert over for her. And for that price, uh, it's not worth it. Quite simply, for that price, you can literally just grind up to tier 5 in the Japanese battleship line, convert some free XP, the same amount of free XP, and go straight through to Yamato, and have a better ship. 
the Musashi, it's, you know, it's Yamato with the secondary and AA guns stripped off of it, and someone took a sledgehammer to the gun barrels, <laughs> and then they made it a tier 9. And for some reason it has a hundred more HP, I don't, that's kind of weird, but it does, has a hundred more HP than Yamato, so you can take one more overpin than Yamato. Um, it's, yeah, it's it's simply just not worth the money because, like I said, you can literally, you know, just grind to the Congo, spend all that free XP, go to the Yamato, buy the premium camo for it, so probably stuff may left over to buy some premium time too, and ha have a better um, income gain. Because the whole point of this ship is it's a tier 9 um, Yamato premium. So you have giant 18.1 inch guns, you can do a, you can do a ton of damage with this ship. And with that premium economy, you can really rake in a bunch of credits and XP. But with a Yamato with more accurate guns, you know, more secondaries and AA that actually works with the premium camo, you can outperform this ship. At least I can. I have. I, I've played um, one game where I had 80,000 XP in Musashi. And one game where I had 80,000 80, 80, damage in Musashi, and then another game where I had 80,000 damage in Yamato. And yes, the Musashi did outperform the Yamato in terms of ex in terms of uh, XP and credits. However, with Yamato, at least for me, I find that I can easily do more damage in Yamato than I can in in Musashi. And there you go. I didn't really need to spend $150 to get this ship, um, but I did, and I have it, and it sits in port now, just collecting dust, and this is the first time I played it in, like, three months, <laughs> or whenever the last time I had uh, the, the Musashi um, Final Impression video. Um, I mean, and just a quick note, I have had good games in all four of these ships. Um, it's quite ironic, actually, when I took these ships out to record each of its... Um, you know, just background for each, each game was actually a pretty dang good game. Um, so, I mean, and just a quick reminder, this is all my opinion from my personal experience with these ships. And I am by no ways condemning any of these ships. If you have this ship and you love it and you're doing great in it, keep on going, bud. That's great for you. I'm happy that you're doing great in it, you know. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, you know, really just saying these ships are garbage or anything. This is just my opinion on these four ships. And, um, I just regret buying these ships because, you know, I could use the money somewhere else. Um, probably in World War ship somewhere else. But, you know, so I have no hard feelings about anybody that enjoys these ships. I have no hard feelings really to these ships, you know. I just regret buying them. That, that's it. That makes sense, right? <laughs> um, I guess a better title for this would be my four least favorite premiums. Um, because the, the Roma is the only ship that, like, I'm really frustrated with because I, I've tried so hard to get that ship to work at, like, um, tier 10 and tier 9, and it just can't. Whereas Musashi, you can, you're fine at tier 9 and tier 10. It's just that it's playstyle, you have to hang back because you barely have any secondaries or AA, and with the, up uh, with the upcoming carrier uh, rework, the amount of planes in the sky is probably going to increase and that's no bueno for a Musashi player. Oh wow, that 18 minutes already? Dang, this is supposed to be a 10 minute video. <laughs> okay, well, I guess uh, that's my cue to end it here. If you like the video, drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Um, down below in the comment section, tell me is there a premium that you regret buying at any point in time? Um, is, is any of these premiums your favorite? Let me know. But anyway, uh, yeah, thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.